Welcome back to the Ceremony Podcast, episode 111. Another episode with a Major League Baseball player. We have Tony Santion on the podcast. Uh, we'll be talking about his career with the Reds so far, minor league stuff, high school, all that, the lockout a little bit here and there. So I hope you guys are ready for that. Maybe even some sports at the end. Uh, as always, you can follow our social media page at SR Only Pod on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow our personal pages. Mine is at the Healy Six. I'm I Goose with four O's. And then Tony, what's your uh, what's your social tags? Man, you asked some great questions there. You know, I want to <laughs> I want to say it's uh, Tony Santi underscore sixty four. You're wrong. To be honest, okay. I'm pretty sure that's it. Yeah, well, on Twitter, it's Tony underscore Santi. Wasn't well, even 19. close. 19. I Tony think we underscore. Got like a... <laughs> <laughs> and then your Instagram is Tony Santion 2. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> there we go. We got like a 50% rate on that. We should usually give the heads up to get those, <laughs> those ready. We got about a 50. I would never remember mine, but I try to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. Yeah, and I just don't check get, it very often, you know. Mm -hmm. You get you that check mark sometime. You're you're in the big time now. I haven't I done that it. already. Thought I had it to be honest. Not on Twitter. You might have. You, I think you have it on Instagram though. There's a reasoning I didn't get it on Twitter. <laughs> I was giving. I was, I was. I was giving a, a actual reason. I just can't remember what it was. Damn. Maybe, well, I think the, I remember 2K, they want to give you the logo because you weren't in the bigs. Yeah, I, I asked, I think, I can't remember, I, I think they weren't doing it at the time when we requested it. Gotcha. Okay. Something was going on on their end where they weren't doing it at the moment. Something along those lines. Yeah, I'm glad to have you on. It's been a long time coming, trying to. <laughs> oh, yeah, I've been trying to coordinate this for a while. I was while. like, all right, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's go, and. Just never, never could find a date, and then now's a good time, especially you aren't in Arizona, you're chilling in Texas right now, waiting for the word to go out, spring training, doing your own thing at the moment. Yeah, kind of weird. Base, Major League Baseball has until Monday before they start canceling games. Don't want that, or pushing back games. Don't want that at all. It's going to be uh, an interesting next few days. I I think they could get something done, but the players, they're holding strong with what they want, and the owners kind of put them in a, a tough position because of the deadline. I think they knew the deadline was there, but players aren't going to back down. They're going to get what they want. But first year... Played in 2021, long time coming. Got drafted in 2015 out of high school. And I was taking a look at like your perfect game stuff. Through 94 as a senior. <laughs> and then I think. Some, uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, you, you threw 90 at uh, like in 2013 and then 2015. Or 2014, end of 2014, you were throwing 94, which is in like the 99 point something percentile. Absolutely insane. A lot of guys today struggle to hit 94 in general, but yeah, you're ranked sixth overall in Texas, third as a pitcher, 11th pitcher in the, in the nation, 32 overall. Did commit to tech, Texas Tech. Yes, so, I did. That that I did. We got drafted yeah. second second overall. Was there any consideration of not uh signing with the Reds? Um and just going to college. I mean what I remember is I mean, I was represented with uh by Boris, which I still am, and we had like talked about if if the money's right then we'll do it, but if not then will be okay going to college like we had no problem with it so nice. just kind of 
didn't really know what to expect draft day, so just kind of watched it and kind of wa- watched it unfold. And then just got the call right before, probably like four or five picks before the Reds picked. Was asked if the money was right, and I said, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> and then, yeah, the rest was it. They got, I drafted, so. But yeah, it was it was just a matter of whether we got what we wanted and not kind of budging on it. So like yeah, what age definitely was a pro there. Like what age did you realize like, oh, I'm I'm kind of the man pitching. So, I really to be honest, I really I didn't really pitch a whole lot kind of coming up high school. Probably like my senior year, I'd be surprised if I threw over 30 innings i'd be surprised i'd be very shocked if i have more than 30 innings my senior year i'm probably in the low 20s i I didn't throw very much i was always growing up i was always i always played the field either third or short and that was kind of where i played in summer ball i didn't really i summer ball i didn't really pitch i just played third base or shortstop so pitching was very new to me when i got a pro ball really didn't know what i was doing i just knew i threw hard and had no idea where the ball was going so it was uh <laughs> definitely a learning experience I, I knew so a lot there was a lot to learn kind of throughout the process so i had a fresh arm kind of coming in than probably what most people would have it's definitely uh, a lot easier to throw hard and probably get your control down than it is to have good control and try to get that velocity up i'd probably agree with that statement but yeah, like I just didn't pitch a whole lot. I was always out on the position. How did that work out? Was it just scouts were just they had you going about like fielding, pitching, hitting, and then they were just like, wait, yeah, you got good pop in the <laughs> mid. Like let's 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 keep so, throwing you there. So, yeah, I mean I was so like I committed a tech as a two way, and then just kind of going up like. I think it was like the fall um, before my senior year, I was told if I wanted to go out to uh, Jupiter for a tourney with a team. And I said, sure. And we just happened to play, our first game was happened to be against uh, the number one team there. And they had, uh, they had uh, like Brendan Rogers and a bunch of guys uh, on that team that everyone wanted to see. And I, the starter we threw through like three innings, something happened, and then they asked me, "Hey, can you give us like a couple innings?" I'm like, I'm "Sure." And that, and that's when I, I think that's when I threw like 94, like topped that at 94, and that's kind of when the wheels started rolling. Because prior to that, like I was just another kid from high school just playing baseball, just gonna go to college and see what happens. So I was since you had nobody draft wise. Up until that 194 in front of the right people at the right time. So I got pretty lucky just being at the right Damn. right spot at the right time, essentially, because there was like 100 plus scouts there. It's wild. Um, funny how, and yeah, funny then, how life works. And, yeah, and then like two days, two, three days later, I, I, I had an actual start. And then a lot of people showed up for that. And yeah, that's when everything just kind of changed really fast month and a half later two months later high school season starts and pe- people everywhere like coming to the games to kind of like scouts wise to watch I'm like jeez and that's <laughs> like celebrity so, status right so it, was, so it was very accelerated like then probably most people who kind of went that high was for me it was like a probably five month accelerated process of nothing to everything so it's pretty, pretty wild, pretty cool experience. Damn. Okay. So did you, uh, did you only play baseball in high school or like, was that, was yes. that always been your sport? Okay. Okay. Yeah. High school. All I did was play baseball. They always they tried to, a lot of like, they always try to recruit me to play football, but I always told them no, but I was going to say you tried. got the height. You got, uh, were you always tall? Uh, Throughout high school, yes, I was. Okay, okay. I used to be tall until uh, I think I turned 13 and I didn't grow. 
Yeah, ever uh, ever since you got drafted, uh, you moved up the ranks. Uh, as there, was, there didn't seem to be like too many setbacks, and 2020 season rolled around. That was kind of a little weird one for Bang! you. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, you, you didn't get to play weird. at all. Nope. Nothing. You were on the. Were you on the the bus? What was it like the yeah, taxi I, squad like group? Yeah. The, the forty man that they just had at, like an alternate site. Yeah, I was at the alternate site. Um, that was that was something. <laughs> it was uh, it was a. Uh, I don't know. It was it was fun for. It was cool to like be there and do baseball stuff, but like after a while, it's like just the same thing over and over. Because like that was that was I like peak like highest restrictions you can have like everything's like yeah. very very to the t like the field to your room essentially so like it was like for me like cool like i do that anyways but it was more it, it just felt almost like you were like i mean you were like locked down in a sense when you got there mm-hmm. um and then once because you were you weren't allowed to like because the second time like last year the first month for like AAA was quote unquote alt site, but the only difference was you actually traveled to like certain people. And 2020, it was just whoever's there, you're scrimmaging against each other. And after a while, guys, like I'm over here facing India, and India had seen me a hundred times already. Yeah. So like, and he, I, I'm like same guy again. Nice same lineup and they're they're probably the same they were probably the same way like oh, i gotta face the same guy over and over and over again so it just got very repetitive but at the same time it was good to actually be part of that group and the team wanted wanted me to be a part of it gave me an uh, opportunity to for something to happen jonathan india stud rookie of you the said year it. The you said it and Sir. uh a lot of video games played at that time. I think we played a lot of Escape from Tarkov. It <laughs> yeah. might have been like the peak peak time. Uh, nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing's changed. Still a lot of video games. It's my hobby outside of baseball. It's my way of getting away from baseball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of people have different things. What yeah, they I was going to ask doing that in their too. Free time yeah what's that way to to step away what's that one thing to step away i i mean for me it's definitely like video gaming it, it, for me it's gaming it's definitely gaming that's what i was going to ask as well too because you know obviously we've gamed i've gamed you play 2k and other games as well um do you do you stream do you stream on twitch also once upon a time not long ago you know okay i got gotcha. you <laughs> i did it for i did it like the co- the when covid was big when i was at the outside yeah yeah i know a lot of guys were doing had, around that I had, time i had so much free time just because mm-hmm. like the schedules were like you can only be at the field for so long so you had a lot of free time and i kind of tried it out and it was it was good for a little while and then started getting a little busier mm-hmm. a little more tired at the field busier days and i just kind of slowly got away from it yep so i haven't done it since Last year, though, 2021, first time in AAA, and you made your Major League debut. Started off as starter. Yeah, you were, mm-hmm. you were a starter coming up. Started out, got a couple spot starts when needed in the rotation. Made your Major League debut against Colorado. Yes. And then, like, it's, it's crazy just because I've known you for so long. Uh, since you were with like Dayton and Daytona mm-hmm. and whatnot, but I know you pitched against Colorado. You pitched against the Padres one time. You started against them. Like it's <laughs> you like playing MLB the Show. You're playing against Tatis, <laughs> Trevor Story, Manny Machado in the games, and now you got to pitch against them in real life. Yeah, like what was what was that experience like? Oh man, it was it was good. I mean, it was it was very surreal and very kind of very 
happy emotions kind of throughout the first like few weeks being there. But at the same time, like once I was when I was like in the moment, like on the mound, it was it was just another just another game. Nothing really changed from there. But like off the field and stuff, it was like I'm here, you know. <laughs> and then I gotta stay here now and do what I gotta do to stay here. But no, yeah, it's it was awesome. It was crazy. It was it was cool. Won't forget it. That's for sure. First strikeout, Trevor Story. You got him looking. I remember, uh, like watching, watching those games. But started out, came up as a starter, made some spot starts here and there, and then got sent down for a couple weeks and came back as a reliever. What was the transition like with that, like getting adjusted to only pitching a couple innings here and there? The the adjustment was, it was hard for sure. It it wasn't easy. It was telling a guy that's wired to start his whole pro career and then sitting him down and telling him, hey, man, for the right reasons. So we thought they were going to transition me to the pen. I was all for it, whatever. They wanted for me, whatever they wanted me to do to kind of help the team. I was down for whatever. Like, who's going to say no to an opportunity uh, to come back to the show? You know, no one. So, yeah, I was all on board. And the transition, yeah, it wasn't easy. It was as far as like the the inning, two innings or whatever. That that was that was fine. It was more the the like coming prepara- in a situation pre- and preparation, whatnot. like. How how do I go about like before the game like during stretch catch play like how do I go about that like and then once the game starts like how like when do I get ready how do I get ready because it happens very quick and just kind of but the hardest thing was definitely like the mental side of it because it's a whole it's 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 different than what I was used to with starting you have innings on innings to kind of get through this you know you give up one run in the second inning cool i got four or five more innings i'll be fine it ain't like that in the pen man you go up there and first pitch better be your best pitch no matter what it is and to whoever it is and get your get your outs no matter how you can and make sure no one crosses that plate it's just a different mentality mentality that i kind of had to figure out right off the get-go and i was only i was only down for a couple of weeks um so most most of my learning came at the big league level so it was learning on the hardest stage on the fly oh, yeah. so it was it was it wasn't easy but started yeah. to, slowly started to figure it out and it started to become really fun and that's kind of when i kind of took off once I kind of figured it out and started enjoying it, understanding the kind of process. Yeah, June uh, June 29th was your last start, and then July 16th was your first mm-hmm. out of the pen situation. And then uh, yeah, out, out of the pen, 26 innings, 2.36 ERA, struck out 36 batters in that time, only allowed a 620 OPS absolutely insane and then uh out of those seven runs you allowed four of them came in your first three appearances out of the pen and then you had 19 appearances after that 23 innings 1.14 era and you struck out 33 batters at that time you just killing it 509 ops (laughs) Definitely found your groove then. I was gonna say it just clicked. <laughs> yeah, I was just yeah, like throughout the process, I can slowly like tell like I was in the hang of it, and then yeah, just there was just that one day, and there was just that one time when the name was called, and I was like, it it just felt different the way I kind of went into the game as far as mindset and preparation. And then from that one, it just built off, and then just one after another. And once, obviously, in anything, once that confidence is is up there, it's kind of hard to 
go backwards. Yeah. I'm excited to see what you do in 2022 with that. I did see you a couple times. Uh, we finally got a meet in person, which was sick. I think I saw, I think I may have seen you like three or four times because played the Cubs a bunch. Mm -hmm. One, two, and then saw you three. twice. And then, and then the White Sox one other White time. Sox. And then, unfortunately, you're only going to end up with one hit in your career. You had a double. Hey, one's you, better, you... than, better than a zero, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, can, I, can, I can say whenever I want to say it that I have one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of pitchers who don't. I can look back whenever I wrote in and say I had a hit. Yeah, it'll be people. You tell your kids, your grandkids down the line, they'll be like, "What do you mean? You got you were a pitcher?" Like, yeah, they they hit back then. <laughs> back in my day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I saw I saw you hit a couple times too in Wrigley because. You went like ah, that's right. You went fly like, ball to center field. <laughs> yeah, you got a hold of one. You got one of the games I was at. The one hit was a double, so that yeah. makes it even better. It makes it that much sweeter. They got to see you run, sprint to second. I guess it was off the wall. It goes my first hit and my yeah, and my first one. That just started. Yeah. It's gonna be was that game. It, it sounds weird. It's like it's like weird. How do I what? word this? It's weird that the NL is gonna have the DH, but it's weird that they haven't had the DH this whole time. Yeah, could be different. Exciting. So I think on uh, the Reds, uh, they have they've had a great rotation the past couple of years. They've had a lot of notable names with Luis Castillo, Sonny Gray. Trevor Bauer was on it a couple of years ago. Uh, Wade Miley, what a pretty sick year. Same with Tyler Maley. Was did you were you able to get like any tips from any of those guys? I've been. I didn't really talk to them. Like as far I, I'm more. I, I was more of an observer. Okay. On kind of watching them and how they went about their business. They were all very. They were all very good people to kind of watch and see how they dealt with all their stuff, just kind of watching and seeing what they do because everyone's different, but definitely learned a lot just by watching how they take, take care of everything and go about their business. Then had a couple sit down with a few of them and get a little knowledge from them. Is there yeah, any guy in in the bullpen that you would chat with a lot during the games uh i mean at the beginning it was just kind of everyone kind of helping me out throughout the process because i knew I, I had no idea what i was doing as far as like prep stuff so i asked a lot of questions bullpen coach uh lee tunnel and also dj they helped me a lot a lot of recommendations kind of suggestions and then some of the guys just kind of brad brock he he gave me some advice. Um, a lot of those guys did. And, but yeah, it helped a lot. And then when we traded for Luis Sessa and Justin Wilson, Sessa ended up being the guy that I just kind of would sit with each other every, like every game we're next to each clubhouse. other. <laughs> and we just, just kind of ended up creating a good little bond and just kind of kind of went from there. I guess that's another transition too, from being starter to reliever. So I, I don't think a lot of the starters chill in the, the bullpen at all. You kind of no. had to be away from everyone. Just yeah, doing was, your own that, thing. Yeah. Just watching it from the outfield or wherever it was. Definitely different. Yeah, another thing that's pretty cool is you, you and Tyler, both on the big league team, yeah. you guys kind of came up around the same time. Tyler was another. He was drafted in the first round of the 2015 draft. You were the second. You guys have been kind of moving up the levels the same. Now you get to play play with each other. Yeah, that was that, that was 
that yeah we came up had played yeah played came up together and then uh covid year he got his call i think no did he i can't remember yeah, yeah he, he played twenty. He, he got yeah he got his he's got his call covid year and that was you know that was that was fun to watch fun to fun to hear but yeah coming up we he i was he always caught me so we created a really good bond good friendship so kind of watching his success kind of throughout was obviously fun to watch then kind of being able to share the same the same field at the big league level kind of coming up together was was a full circle was awesome yeah it was awesome it was it was cool i think he was the first guy that met me at the door when i walked into the building sick i i met him a couple times before uh because the reds visited chicago and both both times tyler's like yeah hopefully next time tony's here yeah <laughs> we all knew like we knew each other i'm like yeah dude he'll be up here at some point i think before i think maybe like before covid all hit i was like this is the year you're you're gonna make the next step kind of delayed it a little bit but here you are now <sighs> this this off season uh what's what would you say is like the number one thing you've decided to work on um and it's been just kind of i wouldn't say there is, there's anything specific it's just kind of getting ready staying healthy and kind of try to pick up where i kind of finished kind of keep that same trend moving but i didn't really put a specific like get bit on this i think it was just more just kind of Re- refine everything and just yeah like dj D- dj has a good saying that i follow very truly uh, so uh be good be great at what you're good at and that kind of that i like to use that a lot kind of think of that a lot so just kind of working on what i know i'm very good at and just kind of making it trying to make it great perfecting that craft essentially just knowing yep. knowing what i do very well and just kind of making it better essentially so you've just been mentally prepping physically getting ready because you never know when this lockout's going to end i mean i don't think anybody has any idea for all we know it could be tomorrow but yeah. no, no. <clears throat> so to obviously you're mentally ready you know march is in well it's a short month so less than a week yeah. Uh, which is you would normally be in Arizona. You're in Texas right now. Growing up, I just got a. It's kind of off topic. Yeah, it's kind of on topic, I guess. Did, so you grew up in Texas. Is that which? So wh- what was your favorite team growing up, and who did you idolize? So we grew up like ten minutes from the Rangers ballpark, mm-hmm. and once I like started to play baseball and stuff as a kid. Uh, my my cousins and stuff would are were also baseball like enjoy playing baseball and they played baseball so we would always we would all our parents would take us to the Rangers games every time they could so that's kind of where we would go and that's kind of who we watched growing up and I wouldn't say I really idolized anybody I just kind of played because I enjoyed it and had fun doing it. And okay. then it, it just got to a point where like, oh shit, this is becoming serious, you know? Yeah, we're like, pretty good at this. I'm actually I'm actually pretty decent at this. And that's kind of when it just became serious and did what I had to do. But yeah, growing mm-hmm. up it wasn't it was just more like fun and kinda have fun and just enjoy it. So there really wasn't anything like crazy to it. But then okay. once I got to an age where I could understand and you know pretty much understand what's going on then that's kind of when things kind of shift a little rangers like had a up, like freshman year probably is kind of when i was like all right take it serious you know mm-hmm. rangers had a lot of a lot of decent teams growing up with a rod at one point a rod maybe a little a little too early for tony uh <laughs> 
but <laughs> like the, the Beltron years and whatnot, the the two back to back World Series that they made, mm-hmm. and then even into like the mid 2010s, they were still pretty solid. Man. <laughs> Did, did you watch, uh, were you really invested in that 2011 World Series? Oh, for sure. That was probably like <laughs> peak, like, moment as a, like, watching baseball. Like, I understood baseball very well at that point. I think I might have been a freshman or a freshman, I think. So, like, I understood it very well, and I followed baseball very heavily at the time. So, yeah. Man. What could have been with that that team? <laughs> That's that's just baseball though, with how how random it is and just all these crazy hits and oh uh, yeah outcomes. Base, just baseball being baseball. That's the beauty of it, though. Just sometimes you could put your best pitch out there, and it just gets put in play. There's nothing hey, you can do about it. It's hit where hit where the ball isn't or the players aren't. Yeah, you can throw your best pitch, and you're asking for a new ball. It doesn't matter, you know? Mm-hmm. Just baseball being baseball. Do you have any other questions, Dustin? No, I was going to ask some uh, some other questions regarding... Well, I know we talked a little about, uh, about gaming. Uh, mm-hmm. Baseball, obviously, is the life. Is there any other sports that you watch? Like, do you watch? Did you watch the All Star Weekend by chance? So I watched the. I watched it a little bit. I watched. I didn't watch like the dunk contest, all the skill stuff, but I did watch the actual game. The All Star game, yeah, yeah. I yeah, caught. I, I, I just watched Steph Curry just absolutely go bananas. <laughs> that was so, the, one of the craziest. Yeah, it, was, it was crazy. <laughs> He's a video game in real life. That it's nuts. It's it's. And what's crazy is he's been slumping a little bit, so yeah, now I know, like I, I feel like he's got his swagger back, and it's yeah. it's just a wrap. I remember at the beginning, like oh, he's having like the worst uh, his his worst numbers from downtown this year, and then five minutes later, he starts hitting like some crazy shots that were just, and then he just went on a tear. I'm like, well, he's probably not going to be anymore. So I, I want to see him break that threes in a game record again. He could do it. You'd still oh, yeah. would definitely do it. I think it's fourteen right now. That's I think so. so. Many. That's so and many. I think Clay Thompson's <laughs> second too. Yeah, he is. I'm pretty sure because he dropped. Didn't he, was that Clay had Thompson been Clay when he and, dropped uh, like six? Clay Thompson and Kobe had thirteen. That's wild. Kobe's not even like known as like a three point shooter. From the day he dropped eight million, it, the eighty one points. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you didn't miss much on the dunk contest. I actually sat down and watched it. Yeah, for, and I, like I didn't hear Clay very actually has the record it. with fourteen. That, that that's what I thought. Oh, Clay and has then, it. And okay, then, and then Curry and Levine have thirteen. Then Curry, Danielle Marshall, and Kobe have twelve. And then Curry has yeah, eleven I, I th- four times. Yeah. I, I had thought Fleet's Clay broke there. it. The the year he got hurt, I think he had broke it that year. Yo, he's Clay. Clay's nuts, man. It's it's wild. So eleven is technically seventh all time. Crazy. <laughs> and Steph Curry has hit eleven so many times. Ten times in his career. <laughs> <laughs> That's absurd. Ten That's times. That's a hundred and ten threes in ten games. Just ten games. That's. The greatest three point shooter. It's crazy because, like, for a couple of years ago, it's like he's got to do more. So, like, the analysts are like, you know, he's got to do more to be considered a goat. He's got to do more. It's like, what more can he do at this point? He'll definitely go down as the greatest shooter. There's, yeah. there's no debate in that. He already has the most threes, and he has like six years left to play. <laughs> Who knows yeah. who's going to break the three point record after him? Yeah, and then he he's been having a struggle year. I went to the game against the Bucks, and of course, he shot. He made like three threes. He yeah, was, he was terrible. Wasn't that, ga- was that a they blowout were, that game? They were losing by forty points at halftime. Yeah, I drove oh. to Milwaukee to see them <laughs> down forty points at halftime, and then they lost by like twenty or so. Yeah, they made a little comeback. 
Yeah, that's that's it's bittersweet. At least you got to see those, you know, Giannis against Steph Curry. I'm telling you, if I don't see LeBron play in the next couple of years, I'm going to regret it the same way I regret not seeing Kobe play. I've gotten to see other greats play, but not like the goats, you know. But yeah, I've seen LeBron a couple times, but you want to see it like one, one last time. But it, it's with the NBA schedule, it's tough. Mm -hmm. Just with us being in Chicago, it's an Eastern versus Western conference team. So they only play one time in Chicago and Chicago's already expensive in general. Yeah, just, so the, just the one time he goes to visit it's tickets are like double the price. If you want nosebleeds, <laughs> it's like one fifty. Oof. Yeah. But it's worth yeah, it. It's, it's gonna, gotta, it is. No, it was like when we went to see the, price. the Hornets and bulls, we sat 300. Luckily we knew somebody but just being there, seeing Lonzo versus Mello and and seeing like those two go at it and oh man, I don't know. I'm just excited for the Bulls. Every time the Bulls comes up in a topic, I'm just yeah. excited, man. I feel that. You Texas has three teams? Yeah, Houston, Mavs, yeah, yeah, and then three. the Spurs. Yeah. What team did you follow growing up? Mavs. Okay. Babs. Okay. There we go. Yeah. Oh, so you you vividly remember that Mavs taking out that Miami Heat team about uh, uh, 11 years ago? Yeah, for sure. It that's was... 11 years ago. Oh, I know it's crazy, right? <laughs> wow, that's been a while, but yeah. I remember. Yeah, then, yeah the I Mavs, try to go, man. I try to go to, to some games during the offseason when I get a chance and kind of just enjoy it. Now, now it's Luca trying to yeah, shine Luke, there. Just, just Luca. They traded Kristaps. What was your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I, I had a feeling it was going to happen. They've been talking about it. Yeah, there's some speculation going around. So I want to see them build a team. Guard. I want to see them build a team around Luca, though. He's, they he's have special to. to not waste any of his any of any of his years. Yeah. I don't know if he's at the level right now where he could like take over and bring a team to the finals by himself. He's really good, but it takes a special someone to do that by himself, even with some supporting cast. But if they could get like a solid team around him, another all star, maybe even two, that'd be a fun team to watch. Oh yeah, I would. Yeah, I it wasn't. That. It was not Kristaps. It's like John Moran has that factor right now with Memphis. That's like my closest comparison. Granted, he has some talent around him, which is helping. But I think if Luca has the right piece, and you can get a lot of right pieces for what Kristaps was making, I think they'll be good. I, I like the Mavs. All-Star break uh, should be over. I don't know if teams are playing tomorrow. today. I know they're tomorrow. playing tomorrow, so... Final 20, 30 ish games. Yeah. We'll have postseason. Don't really follow hockey too much. I saw you're at the Dallas Stars game not too long ago. Yeah, those man. are fun, man. Ho hockey games are fun. I need to hit up like, a Blackhawks game before Kane and Taves are, are done. Not the yeah, biggest think, hockey fan, but like they won does, three championships with Chicago. Yep. So I've been to just about every sporting event you can go to in. Hockey is definitely one of the funner live you can definitely go to. Absolutely. It's it's it's, it's a blast, man. It's an it's, adrenaline rush. It's crazy. So I yeah, you should definitely hit one up and just just for the experience. The experience is gonna be good. Even if you don't even even if you don't really in, like any of the two teams, just the experience of the of yeah. the game is pretty wicked. Definitely. I'll probably look into a game before the end of the season. Take a yeah, we went, schedule. We went to two. I think I went to one like on a Wednesday and Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm like, Tat, we're going back. We went again like that Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and the wife, the wife was like, I just want to see a fight. Because Wednesday there was a couple instigations and nothing happened. She's like, oh, man, so close. I'm like, yeah, it's all right. I'm trying to go to we, Vegas. And then, we went Friday and there was a brawl and she was so happy. She's like, "All right, <laughs> my day's complete. Can we go now?" And it was Bucket like, the, list. and it was like the first, it was like the first or second period. That's awesome. That's awesome. 
I'm trying to go to Vegas in like April or something. I'm trying to time up a day where the the Golden Knights the Golden are Knights. playing there. I heard right. I heard I heard their games are on a whole new le- whole another level. Oh yeah, brand new team to the city. It was like their first sports team to arrive there after yeah. a long time and they they were good wow. right out the gate. They made the finals or the yeah, Stanley they were in Cup. The final- uh-huh. And they're still pretty decent, but due to the the hype of people traveling to Vegas in general and yeah. the Vegas crowd, it, I've heard it's tough trying to get tickets to games. I believe it. I think it's I think it's worth it, especially if you're going out there. Definitely want to see three a hours, UFC three hours out of the day. at some point. Have you been to a UFC event? No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. This was like this offseason. I tried really hard to go to one, but it, every good fight that I wanted to go to, I couldn't get a hold of anything or it just the timing just didn't work out. I was very close to going to the Nganu and Gain fight in uh, LA. Ooh. But Ooh, it, the heavyweights, that would have been wild. But it, I ended up not working out. Next time it comes to Chicago, I definitely want to try to go, no matter who's fighting. Next I, next year, next year I'll make it a a must. Next year, I'll, next year I'll go to one. Well, this year, at the end I of feel the year. like it's a little tough too because you have the rain around, and like if you get a a pretty bad spot, you could just have a pole in your way or like yeah. an ang- or like if you're at sitting at like the wrong angle, you see like maybe half the cage. You, you gotta get like a decent seat. I yeah. For, to make the experience better than watching it at home. I can only imagine what the energy's like. You're, uh, you're watching a blood sport live. I, wa- <laughs> I, I watch it at home and my energy is through the roof. I can yes. only imagine it in person. <laughs> Oh man! And if you go in person, you can get there at like one p.m. and they have watch like the, the early, early, early prelims. Oh yeah, yeah, not even like yeah, the prelims, the the prelims before the prelims, the early and then prelims, you watch yeah. the prelims, and then you watch the main fights. There's just people yeah. fighting all day. When there's a big card, I watch it from the very first one. That's like the early prelims to the main event, and my face is just glued to the screen. Oh man! So do you have like a like? certain like favorite fighters like maybe in like certain divisions not necessarily i just enjoy the sport and enjoy, enjoy the watching sport. it okay yeah. that's how yeah, i am was... at the moment i just yeah. like yeah like sometimes like even like when they have like the apex ones where like like compared to all the other like big cards like the ufc cards it's like nobody's essentially compared to like the big guys and mm-hmm. i still watch it and i still enjoy it like if it's freaking mcgregor fighting you know it doesn't matter it's, it's still yeah. the same thing it's a fun sport to watch regardless yeah, yeah. yep it, with with all the outside factors that go into it and drama it is a shame with how good some of these fighters are at the moment and oh, we are yeah. just getting robbed and only have what ifs of if john <laughs> john jones would actually fight i don't know if we're ever going to see him fight again yeah. to, like, oh, all man. the drama and him getting in so legal trouble and he was suspended for a while. Just who knows who he would have fought in these divisions and maybe one of the top fighters in like the light heavyweight, heavyweight type divisions. Yeah. Maybe they want to get the shine. They lost and they never held the belt for as long as they have. Yeah, there's a lot of fighters out there that either getting in trouble, they're retiring early um khabib george st pierre should have been able to i thought maybe let go another couple of years but i mean it's a tough sport like when you know you gotta walk away at some point bj penn i mean he fought for a while anderson silva never really walked away but he was my favorite growing up i seen it with mcgregor where he fought multiple times a year and then he he made Mm -hmm. a lot of money and now he's just like all right, I'll fight here and there, but since he doesn't have the drive anymore, he's just he's not that great anymore. He is what's best for business, but I'd like to see him fight more. Obviously, yeah. injuries, you can't do anything about injuries, just like in any sport. That is facts. I think that's going to do it, though, for this week's episode of the Ceremony Podcast. Appreciate everyone that listened as always you can follow us on social media at sr only pod uh you can follow us on 
Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, personal pages at the Healy Six for myself. Yep, I'm I Goose with four O's. And I know mine from earlier. Instagram's <laughs> Tony Santian2 for Instagram and then Tony underscore Santi19 on Twitter. Yeah, appreciate Boom. you stopping by and oh, hope everyone has a good week. Have a yes, good one. Yes, thanks, Tony. <laughs>